Madhusudana Sarasvati was an Indian philosopher in the Advaita Vedanta tradition. He was the disciple of Visvesvara Sarasvati and Madhava Sarasvati, and is the most celebrated name in the annals of the great Dvaita Advaita debate. His Advaitasiddhi is a somewhat classic work, and most Advaita teachers maintain that all the logical issues raised by the Dvaita school of Ananda Tirtha are sufficiently answered by Madhusudana. Birth and education Madhusudana was born in Bengal, and originally called Kamalanayana. He was educated in the Navyanaya tradition, but became an Advaita sannyasi, and moved to Varanasi in order to study Advaita. <laughs> Journey from Dvaita to Advaita According to a story, Madhusudana Sarasvati is said to have really gone to Navadvipa to meet Chaitanya, the great devotee of Krishna. But the Mahaprabhu refused to meet Madhusudana. So Madhusudana turned his attention to studying Naya in the flourishing Navyanaya school. He studied works of a dhyana such as the Laksanavali, the Tattva Sintamani of Gangesha and its commentaries. Soon Madhusudana was recognized as a foremost scholar in Naya. He was also said to have been influenced by the wave of bhakti sweeping across Bengal due to Chaitanya. One story mentions that Madhusudana had, at that time, accepted the Beta Vada, the doctrine of difference. The realism of Naya seemed to provide a logical basis to Beta. He soon became keen on disproving Advaita using all his skills in logic. But at the time, since he had not done an in-depth study of Advaita with the intention of learning the details of Advaita Vedanta in order to disprove them, he proceeded to the sacred city of Varanasi. There, he studied Vedanta under Rama Tirtha. But as Madhusudana studied Advaita more and more, he became convinced of the validity of Advaita. He later confessed to his guru, Rama Tirtha, that he had originally come to defeat Advaita in order to refute it and whether there was there any prayaschita for him. Rama Tirtha is said to have asked Madhusudana to accept sannyasa as the prayaschita. Regardless of whether these stories are true or not, it is true that a reading of the Advaita Siddhi shows that Madhusudana was skilled in dealing with logic and dialectics. Note also that the Nyayika, who is a realist to the core, is as much an opponent of the Advaitin in debates as other realists such as the Dvaitins. Madhusudana was more interested in defending Advaita and tackling the exegetical interpretation of Vedanta aspects. Topic: <laughs> Works. Madhusudana wrote a number of works, all involving the defense and exposition of Advaita Vedanta, of which the largest and most respected is the Advaita Siddhi, which opposes the Dvaita Vedanta positions and arguments in Vyasatirtha's work Nyamtha. Madhusudana also wrote at least nine other works, of which five were commentaries on the Bhagavad Gita, part of the Bhagavata Purana, and others. He wrote the Isvarapratipati Prakas, Vedanta Kalpaladika, Sarasangraha on Sarvajñatma's Sangsepa Sarorika, and the justly famous Siddhantabindu on Sankarakarya's Dasasloki. A total of 21 books have been ascribed to Madhusudana. Of them, 19 books are undoubtedly his, but the authorship of the remaining two is doubtful. Twelve of his books are on philosophy, the rest are poems, plays and miscellaneous themes. The philosophical books include commentaries. Topic list of works Advaita Siddhi Advaita Siddhi 1 2 3 Advaita Manjari Advaita Manjari Advaita Ratna Raksana Advaita Ratna Raksanam 4 Atma Bhadatika Atma Bhadatika Ananda Mandakini Ananda Mandakini Prasthanabhita Prasthanabhita 5 Bhagavad Gita Gudartha Dipika Bhagavad Gita Gudartha Dipika 6 Vedanta Kalpalatika Vedanta Kalpalatika 7 8 Sastra Siddhanta Lisa Tika Sastra Siddhantalzatika Samsepa Sararaka Sara Samgraha Sangsepa Sararaka Sara Sangraha Siddhanta Tattva Bindu, Siddhanta Tattva Binda Siddhanta Binda 9, Pramahamsa Priya, Paramahansa Priya Bhagavadadiya Slokavyakya 10, Veda Studi Tika, Veda Studi Tika Asta Vikriti Vivarana, Astavirkrita Vivaranam Rajanam Pratibhada, Isvara Pratipati Prakasa, Isvara Pratipada Prakasa 11, Bhagavada Bhakti Rasayana, Bhagavad Bhakti Rasayanam Krishna Kudahala Nataka, Krishna Kudahalam Bhakti Samanya Nirapana, Bhakti Samanya Nirapanam Sandilya Sutra Tika, Sandilya Bhakti Sutra 
Sivamahamnastutradika Hari Lila Vakya Harilalavyakya Sivamahamnastatradika Sivamahamnastatradika Topic Quotes on Madhusudana Saraswati Madhusudana was so accomplished in Navya Naya new logic techniques that the following verse is quoted about him when he visited Navadvipa, the center for learning in Naya Shastra, Navadvipa Samayat Madhusudana Vakpatau Kakamp Tarkavajasa Katarabhudgadadhara meaning, when Madhusudana, the master of speech, came to Navadvipa, Mathuranatha Tarkavagisha who was the foremost Navya during those times trembled with fear and Gadadhara another logician of great repute became afraid. A few words about the authors. Madhusudana Sarasvati is a towering giant among Advaitins. An oft quoted verse regarding him is Madhusudana Sarasvatya Param Vedi Sarasvati Param Vedi Sarasvatya Madhusudana Sarasvati, meaning, only the goddess of learning, Sarasvati knows the limits of knowledge of Madhusudana Sarasvati. And Madhusudana Sarasvati knows the limits of knowledge of goddess Sarasvati. Topic follower of Bhakti Yoga Madhusudana Sarasvati was a great devotee of Lord Krishna. Just like Apeya Dikshita, who integrated Sividveda into Advaita Vedanta, Madhusudana bridged the Sattvata school of Pankaratra Vaishnavism and Advaita Vedanta philosophy. Madhusudana boldly differs from Adi Sankara in some of his interpretations of the Brahma Sutras and the Gita, although he salutes Adi Sankara and Shursvara in the most reverential terms. Tradition also recounts that Vithalisa, the son of Vallabhacharya of the Sudadvaita school, studied under Madhusudana Sarasvati, who thus forms a crucial link between Advaita Vedanta and many Vaisnava sects in the north. Topic relation with Akbar According to a Dasanami legend, Madhusudana Sarasvati complained to the Mughal emperor Akbar about Muslim attacks on Hindu ascetics. Akbar's courtier Birbal suggested that Sarasvati initiate non-Brahmin members in his group and arm them. This legend has been passed down through oral tradition, and its historicity is not confirmed by historical texts. However, J. N. Farquhar believed that it had some historical basis. Topic sources and further reading Carl H. Potter, Madhusudana Sarasvati in Robert L. Arrington ed. A Companion to the Philosophers. Oxford, Blackwell, 2001. ISBN 0 631 22967 1. Sarvpali Radhakrishnan, et al., ed., History of Philosophy Eastern and Western, Vol. 1, George Allen and Onwin, 1952. Surendranath Dasgupta, Madhusudana Sarasvati, A.D. 1500, A History of Indian Philosophy, Vol. 2. References <laughs> <laughs>